Hello everyone and welcome. Today's video is about the cabbage shrimp remove and how to raise it in captivity. But before getting to the tricks and tips about raising them, I want to say a couple of things. So the first thing is that this video is a little bit longer, but keep in mind that this reading process took a couple of months, so 21 minutes is not that long compared to this. These shots may be familiar with you because I used them in previous videos, but this uh, certain or this individual moth came from cocoons or pupae from Kenya and so did the next moth, but later in the video you can see the same species that is really really different and is a lot darker and that's because that the population that f uh, flies in the place they are from which is the village in Africa named Obaut is suspected to be a subspecies because it's a lot darker and a lot different from the other uh, cabbage shrimp removes that fly in different parts of Africa. So it's a really interesting thing. And now speaking of Africa, I want to tell you something interesting. As you may or may not know, there is the second largest rainforest on our planet. And it's the Congo Basin rainforest. This rainforest is very important and it's spread all across or al almost the whole Africa and it's spread across Cameroon and about is in Cameroon. So it's really, really important to address this. It's the second largest rainforest and it's the, most, it's the second best place or most richest place for biodiversity in our world, which is amazing. And actually 75% of all blockbuster medicine that has been developed in the last 50 years comes from Amazon or the Congo Basin or basically rainforest in general. So it's a really important f place to study um, biochemistry or biology so it's basically a really, really rich place for all life and it's a natural treasure of our earth. But it's disappearing two times faster than the Amazon rainforest, which is really sad. And I just want to say that it's a challenge to do something to change this, but we have to start at our own doorstep first. I'm gonna make more videos on this topic, but now to the video. Here is the dark moth that I mentioned. And here are the caterpillars. Now notice the color variation, it's really interesting. But now I'm going to show you the reading process. This was just a start to entertain you and catch your attention. So the first step are the eggs. And this is how I keep them. A small petri dish and a wet paper wall. And this is how I keep the first instar or the hatchlings. A small container with paper towels on the bottom and leaves of the food plant, which is ligustrum in this case. They can also eat poison ivy in some cases, which is really interesting because poison ivy is basically poisonous as the name indicates. And it's a very simple, simple species. You just need to keep them warm and give them a good food plant. And now after two or three days, I move them from the small plastic container into a bigger box like this. It's basically the same process. You have to keep them clean and keep them warm and give them fresh and clean food plant from a good source and just replace the food plant and clean their plastic box. As you can see there are also plastic or oh, there are also paper towels on the bottom of the plastic box. And now interesting thing, notice that these caterpillars are almost going to molt and I'm going to show you how I know and explain why in the or later in the video. If you read moves, then you may know why, but if you don't, then I'm going to explain later. So make sure to stick around and watch this video until the end. And now we are going to get to the next instar, which is instar number two. And the same process is applied. You can see that they are noticeably different and they are a lot, of, a lot bigger and that means they will consume a lot more leaves and they are going to be needed or they, it's going to be important to change or to keep them clean more frequently compared to the first instar. Here are some more shots of the caterpillar. You can see that there is the instar number one next to instar number two here, which is a little, little uh, slower, but it's going to molt any, basically any minute or any day now. But generally this species is very easy to keep and I would recommend it to beginners and it's, it's, not, it's not difficult at all basically, it's just some basic steps have to be applied and that's keeping them clean, keeping them warm and giving them good food as I keep saying in this video. 
And now, what we do next is that we move the Insta number two into a bigger box. And I'm going to show you how the process of moving them basically looks like. It's simple and the thing you just have to keep in mind is to be gentle with them. And this is the box I used. It's just a little bit bigger and there is no ventilation, but it's, it's good to open them maybe a couple times per day to air it out and be sure that the condensation doesn't form because the caterpillars can be, uh, they can drown in the droplets of the water and they can also spread disease. But these are from Africa and they like to drink. So little misting is not bad, but for example, I haven't misted them uh, as I bred them and it, they basically did all right. So it's not always necessary to mist or to spray caterpillars. You can see that it's a bigger box, but there are just leaves inside and there is the paper tissue on the bottom and that's basically it. And it's, it's very simple. And here are the caterpillars. It's a really fascinating species and they are really interesting and beautiful moths. And the caterpillars are amazing. Just wait to see them in the later instars. And now, a couple days later, we have an update. And you can see that the instar number two has reached their maximum size and they are going to molt into instar number three. And as I promised you, I will tell you how I know. So you can see that their heads become really small, they stop feeding and they stay still. And you can see that the head capsule becomes empty and you can also see a new head forming behind the old and empty head capsule. And that's basically how you can tell and how I know. It's really simple and it's especially easier to tell with bigger caterpillars because the head capsule is really, really big so you can easily tell. Now you can see that their cage is a little dirty and it's a not good idea to keep them dirty and you have to replace their food and basically keep them clean. But the reason why is that it's not really good to disturb them while molting. You can do it if you know how to move them safely, but I do not recommend to disturb caterpillars when they are molting. They won't die or anything, but you can disturb them and it can have bad consequences. So. It's best to leave them alone and just let them do their thing. I have learned how to handle them safely and gently, but if you don't know how, just don't disturb them and it will be okay. And now you can see these are the molded caterpillars, so they have reached Insta number three. So far, everything is great. They are not dying. They are growing very well and very fast and they like the conditions. So this method I'm using is working so far. Here are the caterpillars, you can see there, they are looking a lot different and you can see some spines that formed on the caterpillar's body and these spines are called tubercles. So you can see that they are starting to have their typical look, I would say. And now a really important step in our breeding. So as I said, it's okay to raise them in plastic boxes and just keep increasing the size of the box. But in Insta number three, now is the point where we are going to move them to a netted cage. Or some call them the pop cage. But basically you just take them out of the box very gently and very carefully. And they are a lot bigger now, so they are more robust and they are not so fragile as they grow. And in the later instars, or for example, in the last instar, they are very, very big and robust. So it's not easy for you to harm them or to damage them. So it's generally for most caterpillars that as they grow, they are easier to keep. But sometimes the older they are, it's more difficult with some species because they are, for example, more vulnerable for viruses or something, you know, so it depends on the species. So you can see that the caterpillars can sometimes get stuck on the paper tissues. So be always careful to not rip their legs away because they are careful and it can happen. So be gentle with them and just gently move them or help them or wait for them to climb away or give them a leaf to climb onto and they will basically just climb away from the paper tissues. And once you move them, you are ready to prepare a pup cage. And basically what you need to do is just place some paper tissues on the bottom 
and get some cans or some water bottles or some a vase fill with water and then just put the cuttings of your food plant in there. I would say that Ligostrum is one of the best food plants for this species, especially in winter, but I bet they can be raised on liquid umber, which is a really good food plant for many silk moths. And I haven't raised them on it myself, but it's definitely worth a try. And maybe it would be even better than Ligostrum. So you have to just try and let me know how it went. I'm certain it will be go it will go good. And here you can see how the pop-up cage looks like when it's basically set up. And a really, really important thing that I have to say. You can see that the throat of the bottle is secured with a tissue. And that's because the caterpillars can drown in these vases or in these bottles. So you have to always secure it because the caterpillars are going to drown and they are going to climb in there. And once they climb in there, there is some time that even if they drown, they stop moving. But if you take them out from the water in time and place them on a paper tissue or some newspaper and just let them dry, they can wake up and be okay. But sometimes it's too late. And here is how I would do it. I just basically push some paper tissues in the bottle and it's really, really compact and there is no place that the caterpillar can climb in. And basically if you prepare it like this, then you don't have to worry about them falling in there. Although some species can spin a cocoon in there, so be careful when you are throwing it out because sometimes they can be a cocoon. But this species doesn't cocoon, they don't spill, they don't spin silk cocoons, but they pupate underground. But I'm going to show you that later on in the video. And here you can see the caterpillars are basically placed on the leaves and don't worry, they will find it, they will crawl from them themselves and they will start eating. So just basically move them with the cuttings, don't move the caterpillars themselves. You know, just put a wall stick with the caterpillar on it. Never remove them because you can damage them and hurt them. So never, never remove caterpillars themselves. Take them with the surface they are on, for example, a leaf or the cutting or the stick but don't remove them. And here you can see Insta number three, which is about to mold into Insta number four. And here you can see they are already molting and you can see some fresh Instars number fours compared to some of the Instars in number three. And you can see it's a quite big difference and a big change. And here, this is the most typical look of the cabbage chamber move, right? right there you know the typical tubercules and these typical colors and it's interesting that with this species there are many many color variations and many color forms this is truly a fascinating species they are really beautiful and amazing the colors are just wonderful and they remind me of little dragons what do you think it was such a fun to raise them and i recommend this species to everyone who likes moths and caterpillars it's a wonderful species and I'm so happy that I was able to have them and to, ab to be able to read them and document them and I'm very happy to share these tips and tricks that I learned and these videos that I made with you. So I hope you will enjoy them and I hope that if you decide to breed these species that this video will be helpful to you. So this is the fresh Instar number 4 and now I'm going to show you how they look once they start eating a little bit and they grow and they are a little bit older, it's a big difference. And here is how they look a couple days old. You can see they are starting to get really big. So this means that they like the conditions and they like the food. And basically it's really simple. I just keep them warm and I just keep them ventilated in Insta number three and Insta number four and Insta number five. So basically onwards, from Instar number three. And here you can see some more shots about the, from the caterpillars and here you can see the caterpillar eating the leaf. And now I'm going to show you something interesting. So I keep talking about Instars and about them shedding and changing molds and growing. And this is what a mold of a caterpillar looks like. This is basically what they leave behind. And most of the time, the caterpillar will eat its own skin to get some nutrients and basically uh, use it as a food source. 
but sometimes they don't always eat it and uh, in this instance I was I found them and I decided to make a video about them to show you basically what they leave behind. It's very very interesting I think. I hope that you found it inter interesting as well. And now the next part. So after Insta number 4, the last Insta begins. So this species has 5 Instars total. And this is what Insta number 5 looks like. These are freshly molted caterpillars. And they are rich in color and they are just beautiful. You can see the spiracles and the spiracles are basically the circles you can see and that's how the caterpillars breathe. Now I will show you a couple videos or some footage of the caterpillars eating and basically them on a fresh food. And a really interesting thing is that basically the species consumes only little little amount of leaves as insta number one but as they grow they eat a lot more and the most noticeable change in eating can be seen in insta number five when they go literally through battles full of cuttings in a couple of hours they basically demolish it and eat everything so it's important to also change them daily in this phase and to keep them really, really clean because if you keep them clean there is a little chance of disease or viruses forming and as I said I didn't miss them but if you rear them in the middle of the winter the ligastrum or other leaves is for example poison ivy will have a little amount of water so it might help to spray them and this is what I talked about this was full of leaves and in 24 hours they ate everything which is amazing and fascinating but make sure that you have am enough amounts of leaves and basically the food plant available because they will eat a lot now this is the last instar you can see them on my hand and they are really really huge now they had about 10 to 12 centimeters which is giant so the life cycle is almost over for the caterpillars but a new stage awaits and I'm going to show you how this species pupates because as I mentioned in the video they don't spin cocoons they pupate underground so for a pupation this is what you need to do I just prepared a plastic box and filled it with dirt but make sure that you bake the dirt because they are mites and they will damage or they can eat the pupa so I just bake it let it dry did I mist it let it a little bit little, make it basically humid but also wait a little so it's not like mud so it's basically like nice soil that is not too much humid but not too much dry and just place the caterpillars in there and they will burrow and they will pupate but make sure to not put too many in there because they will disturb each other. So it's a really interesting thing with species that pupate on the ground that they will form a chamber and they will reinforce it with silk even though they don't spin cocoons, they will reinforce the chamber so it doesn't collapse and they have their air in there and basically natural conditions. But if you put too many in there, they will disturb each other and they won't pupate good. And now these are the pupa. And this is basically what they look like and this is what I did to raise them. You, you saw the moths in the first part of the video. So basically the video is nearing the end. I thank you for watching and I really really hope that you learned something new today. And I hope that you liked the video. And I really really hope that in the future when you decide to breed these species for yourself, you will come back or you will find this and it will help you with breeding and rearing these species. The breeding is really difficult because the moths can take months to emerge, so it's hard to get a female and male in the same time. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.